A very good day to you today. It's just great to be with you again in the forest. I hope you've got that nice hot cup of tea, cup of coffee, you're relaxed, and you are prepared to hear the Word of God. Like never before in the history of this world do we as Christians need to fight the good fight. Folks, this is the title fight. This is the fight of all fights in your life and mine. I don't think the Christian church has ever been tested with such severity as it has been tested now in these last days. And the biggest test is coming from within the church. We have to speak the truth, we have to stand on the word, and we have to believe with all of our hearts. There are so many roads leading off the main road. There are so many truths being spoken, but not completely. Uh, for a young person today, the temptations are worse than ever before. When I was a young man, there were no cell phones. There was no uh, possibility of ever getting hold of any pornographic material, for example. And now we see adverts on television for everybody to watch with half-naked women and men. And it's just accepted as the norm. I want to say to you like never before, all roads do not lead to heaven. We are in a fight. And we are not fighting flesh and blood, as uh, the Bible says. We are fighting the principalities and the powers of the air. And I tell you, one of the biggest enemy we are fighting is the enemy of compromise. Okay, is it so bad that this has to happen? Is it so bad that that has to happen? It's the question all the time. The same question that the serpent asked Adam and Eve in the garden uh, uh, with the temptation. What is the big deal if you just eat that fruit? Now, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And that was the downfall. Folks, we need to fight the good fight with the weapons that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. I'm talking about the helmet of salvation. I'm talking about the breastplate of righteousness. I'm talking about the belt of truth. I'm talking about the shoes of the gospel. I'm talking about the shield of faith. I'm talking about the sword of the spirit, the word of God. I'm talking about going out with the joy of the Lord, which is our strength every single day. I get so many letters of people that are perishing through depression, anxiety, and fear. We need to get to know this weapon so we can use it. This is the only aggressive weapon we have is the Word of God. The rest is all defensive. Okay? The Word of God will silence the devil. For example, if there's a person who's anxious and uh, feeling totally desperate and lost at the moment, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 comes to mind straight away. The Lord says to you, madam, to you, sir, do not be anxious for anything, but in all things with prayer and supplication and joy, make your requests known to God. There we have it. You see, we need to understand the battle that we are fighting. We are fighting a war, folks, like never before. You need to put on the armor of God on your children every single day before they go to school because they are, getting, they are getting information that's not of God and it's coming in subtle ways. Young people going out. I mean, if a young girl tries to keep herself pure before, before her marriage uh, night, she's regarded as being um, odd. She's regarded as being queer. There's something wrong with her. If a young man wants to keep himself pure until the night of his wedding, he's regarded as being something, something wrong with him because we all do it. Folks, I want to tell you something now. Just because everybody does it, that doesn't make it right. Okay? You know something? It takes a dead fish to go with, this, with a current. It takes a live one to swim against it. You need to stand up for righteousness. It just takes one man with a bit of courage to stand up and things will be set right. You know that saying that we use on this program often? All that good men have to do is nothing in order for evil to abound. It's the time to stand up and be counted. We need to fight the fight. You cannot fight the fight sitting in your corner on a stool. You've got to get into the ring. You've got to get into the, the arena. We go to a game of uh, rugby or football. 40,000 referees and experts sitting around, but only 22 players on the field. Or if it's rugby, 30 players on the field that are playing the game. You need to get into the game. 
The safest place to be is right in the middle of the fight. I tell you what, a dangerous place is to be sitting in those stands. If your faith is costing you nothing, it's worth nothing. We really need to make up our minds today. Are we going to fight or are we going to throw the towel in? Some ladies watching this program said to me, what does that mean? Well, madam, you're not familiar with boxing. In the sport of boxing, what happens is there's two fighters in the ring. Okay, when the one fighter is getting a terrible beating, his corner, that's his manager and his trainer, they take a towel and they throw it into the ring. When they throw the towel into the ring, it means our fighter is given up. Even though the fighter is still trying to fight. He's half unconscious, so he doesn't know what he's doing. They don't want him to die. They throw the towel in, the fight is over. I want to say to you today, there's somebody watching this program, do not throw the towel in. Okay, it's not over. Angus, I can't take it anymore. You can. Stand up. And I'm telling you, the devil will flee from you. Do not give up. You say to me, I'm going down. My business is almost bankrupt. I don't know what to do. Keep on keeping on. Keep your faith in Jesus Christ. I heard a statistic once that uh, most uh, millionaires at least go bankrupt three times before they make it. Keep up the good fight. It's not the man that can give the punch that's the champion. It's the man that can take the punch is the champion. That's right. The man who keeps getting up, eventually his opponent doesn't know what to do anymore and he loses heart. There was such a man by the name of James Braddock. He was undersized. He was underweight. He was too old and there was no hope for him. But he had a wife and children at home that were hungry. He had no food. This man had no qualifications. He had no degree. All he could do was to use his fists. But he was too small and they gave up on him because he had broken his hand. But you know something? He never, ever gave up. And you know what happened? When he was over the fighting age, okay, and he was too small, he beat the heavyweight boxing champion of the world, James J. Braddock. Folks, he never gave up. Listen to what, what they say in that book. A fighter for a fighter. Self-doubt is a terminal disease. I'll say that again. For a fighter, self-doubt is a terminal disease. When you feel that you can't do it anymore, that's when you're over. When you cannot get off your stool when the bell rings for the 15th round, the last round, and you cannot get off that chair, because you don't think you can make it, you are defeated. The man who keeps getting up. Rocky Marciano fought 49 professional fights. He won 49 professional fights. In those days, they never stopped the fight. Doesn't matter what the man looked like. He could take punishment like no one. You know why? Because he just never had any self-doubt. Most of the men that he fought were at least six inches taller than him. They weighed at least 50 pounds more than him. So how did he defeat them? Because he never doubted for once that he could do it. He could take punishment. And when people thought it was over, he came back and he gave a knockout punch. Folks, if we go to the Word of God, let's go to the Word of God, see what the Lord says about this. Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, and verse 11, But you, O man of God, Flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Listen to this. Fight the good fight, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of of many witnesses. I'm talking to some people here who have made a commitment to Christ in the front of many people and you've been knocked down. I don't know what happened. Maybe you've been through an ugly divorce. Maybe you've lost a loved one and you've had the stuffing knocked out of you. Excuse the pun. And you're sitting in that corner and they've thrown the towel in and it's over. No way, sir. It is not. According to Paul, he says, stand up. Stand up and fight like a man. Stand up and take the devil head on. You know why? Because he's a coward. And when you face him head on, he'll run away. 
The devil is a bully and a coward. You know what a bully is? A bully is someone who keeps hurting you, but as soon as you stand up to him, he backs down and he runs away. I've seen them in my life many times. They are big and they've got a big mouth, but they've got no spirit and they've got no courage. That's exactly what the devil's like. You know what he's like? He's like a little mouse running around with a loud hailer, frightening people into hell. All you've got to do is stand up and take him for what he is. And I tell you what, he will leave you. Okay, he will flee from you because greater is he that is within you and me than he that is in the world. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. We need to start to fight. But folks, I want to say something to you. Don't get into the ring and fight with the devil if you are not in training. See, what you don't understand about professional sportsmen, and I'm talking about golfers, I'm talking about tennis players, I'm talking about athletes of the highest degree, and I'm talking about fighters, boxers. They spend months in isolation, training up in the mountains, eating correctly, sleeping properly, training every day, getting their bodies in condition, just like the gladiators of old. When they come into the ring, they know who they are in Christ. You see? You see, there was 12 spies that were sent by, 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 by um, Moses into the, into the promised land. 12. 10 came back with a negative response. We can't go in there. If you look at it, uh, Numbers 13, 33. We were like grasshoppers in their sight, and so they perceived us to be. See, the way you see yourself is the way other people see you. So if you feel that you're no good, you've got no, that's exactly how you'll be. But if you spend time like a champion up in the mountains training, what do you mean, Angus? Getting up in the morning, reading your Bible, confessing your sins, getting to know who you are in Christ. When you go into the boxing ring, what's the boxing ring? That's the marketplace. That's the school, the university, the workplace. You will know who you are in Christ. And I'm telling you that the demons will flee. When they see you coming, they'll move out. Because even they can see that God is in you. See, when I preach, I always look into the eyes of a man. Why? Because your eyes are the window of your heart. And so when you look into the eyes of a man, you can see what's in his heart. You can see a man who's uh, playing uh, the fool. You can see a man who's been dishonest with his wife. You can see a man who hasn't got the courage to look at you in the eye because his life is not up to standard. Okay? And that is the man that will get a, a hiding, right? A thrashing from the devil every time because he knows he hasn't got a leg to stand on. The man who has confessed his sins, the man who's walking with God, the man who is spending time getting his body into line with the Word of God. I'm talking about his spirit man, folks. He's the man that has the victory every time. There was a time when I started preaching, I used to spend hours trying to write sermons. Well, I gave up. <laughs> I gave up completely. Okay, Trying to get the three points, introduction, Okay, then uh, your three points, then conclusion, then benediction threw it away, started spending time in the Word of God. What does God say about me? Does God say good people go to heaven? No, God says believers go to heaven. The Lord says work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean? It means get yourself into shape. Okay? Confess your sins. Get away from those filthy habits. Start walking in a righteous way. Start loving your neighbor. Start being the man in your house. Start, start, start being the woman in your house. See? Start getting to know the word. When the devil attacks you you, you, you come back at him, not with your opinion, but with the word of God. Then things start changing. When you walk into an office, when you walk into a building, into a, onto a building site, people know that man is a Christian. He's a genuine child of God. They'll leave you. Okay, they, won't, they won't tamper with you. They won't tease you. They won't try and goad you. Come on, come and do what we're doing. Don't, don't touch him. He's a man of God. And you know something? They might not like you, but they will respect you. Why? Because that's how I used to feel 
about men of God before I met Christ. A man does not have to like you. A woman does not have to like you. But they must respect you. Do you know that King Herod, that's right, King Herod, the very man that cut off the head of John the Baptist because his uh, stepdaughter danced before him and said, and he said, I'll give you anything you want, up to half of my kingdom. She said, I want the head of John the Baptist on a platter for me because her mother hated John the Baptist because her mother was an adulterer. Do you know that the Bible will tell you that King Herod respected John the Baptist and he actually wanted to be like John the Baptist from a distance, but he didn't have the courage. He didn't have the guts to stand up for righteousness. People don't have to love you, but they must respect you. When a, a fighter who's in good condition comes into the ring, his opponent is intimidated by him before he even throws a punch because he knows that man has been in the gym. That man has been eating correctly. That man has been training. Look at his condition. But most of all, look at his eyes. In his eyes, you see the eyes of a champion. That is how we are supposed to walk. That is why Paul says to the, his, the young man, Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. You've got to start spending time preparing yourself for eternity. Some of us are so busy trying to make it in this world, we forget that we're not staying here for long, folks. Three score and ten at 70 years and ten extra years if you've got the strength. That's what the Bible says. And I want to tell you something now, folks. I just wish I knew then when I was a young man what I know now. And I didn't waste so much time on things that don't even last, perishable things. And that I hadn't started to put things in heaven ready for when I go home. I want to say to you something now. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul? Mark chapter 8 verse 36. It profits him nothing. He's regarded as a fool. You work so hard. 18 hours a day, sir, you're working. What for? What for? You're working so hard for perishable things that are not going to last. Let us start to fight the good fight for things which are going to last forever. What am I talking about? I'm talking about getting your life right so that you can tell other people about Jesus Christ. I'm talking about spending your life on a, for a worthy cause. What kind of worthy cause? Pulling people out of the eternal fire. Giving people a new chance. Being an example to young people on how they're supposed to live. Folks, we as Christians set the bar for morality in this world. Not the world. We need to be different. I want to say to one young man watching this program now, why are you trying so hard to walk so closely to the world? Why? Jesus says, come and be separated, be set apart. We don't have to be like the people in the world. We don't have to suffer with the same fear, depression, anxiety that they, the world suffers. They don't know any better. You know the truth. Jesus promised you when you gave your life to him, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. What a promise is that? The world doesn't know that. Jesus says, come unto me. All of you that are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you for my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11 says it very clearly. So therefore, we have no reason to be fearful. In fact, we need to be an example. Folks, we have the ability to win the fight. We have all the power. In our corner is the best trainer that ever lived. His name is the Holy Spirit. He will show you where to go, what to do, what uh, punches to throw and when to stand back. We have the victory. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he said, it is finished. What is finished? He's fought the good fight. He's run the race. All we have to do is to pick up the prize. So I want to encourage you as we close now that God is your source. God is your strength. God is your hope. 
And every promise that God made to you and me, he meant it and he's going to keep it. So get up again. There's some of you watching this program have been knocked down and the count is going one, two, three. When we get to 10, the fight's over. Get up, man. Get up and fight that good fight. Say to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it. Doesn't matter how tired you are. Some people in old age homes watching this program, you say, Angus, I'm so tired. Stop trying to do it in your own strength. Start trusting the Lord Jesus Christ and he will do it for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for my dear friends watching this program. Lord, I know that uh, self-doubt is a terminal disease. That's what that famous fighter said. We don't want to doubt you and we don't want to doubt ourselves. Lord, you've said that we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Today, we confess it with our mouths. We refuse to lie down. We refuse to give up. And we thank you for the victory that is awaiting us. We pray now, Lord, that you give us godly discernment and guidance to finish this fight. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. I want to encourage you to keep on fighting the good fight. Folks, faith has got feet. You've heard me say that before. It is a doing word. Faith is not just talking, it's action. Get your life right. Get back on the road tomorrow morning. Start running. Start eating correctly. Start training. Because the battle is the Lord's. And all that you and I have to do is to stand and observe the salvation of God. Exodus chapter 14. Verses 13 and 14. And the Lord said to Moses, stand. And Moses said to the people, stand and see the salvation of God. For the enemy you see today, you'll see no more forever. And the Egyptians were drowned in the Red Sea and the Israelites went across to the other side to the promised land. So until the next time, remember, the battle is the Lord's. The victory is yours, but you need to fight the good fight with everything that is within you. People are watching you. There's a crowd of witnesses waiting to see which way the fight is going to go. And we know that we have the victory. So don't look behind you. A good fighter will never look behind him. Look at your opponent, the devil, and watch him flee before you as you continue to do it according to God's will. May, until next time, God bless you and goodbye. This could be my best day. We trust that you were blessed by today's program. To find out more about Family Time with Angus Bucken, Grassroots, or upcoming events, please go to angusbucken.com. You can join our Facebook family and receive regular encouragements from Angus, or you can keep updated on Twitter at www.twitter.com forward slash Angus Bucket.